Welcome back everyone, Mean Poo here, and today I'm going to show you an easy way to stream using two PCs and no capture card. This process will allow you to stream exactly what you see on your gaming PC without possible hiccups and freezes. Something I'm very familiar with. What you are looking at now is a throughput test on my network. This utility uses a client and server which continuously sends TCP and UDP data streams across my network. You can use it for wired and wireless setups. The program is made by Tamasoft and it's called Tamasoft Throughput Test and it's free on the website. This test is running back and forth but while streaming it's pretty much one way. It goes from the gaming or source computer to the streaming computer and then to the internet by router. If you look at the send and receive data in Task Manager, the speed is fine for streaming movies and typical home stuff, but it's really not efficient enough to stream at a good rate without occasional problems. Take note that the receive points are dropping to the kilobit units, which no one wants to see while streaming or sending files. The test currently running is with the Wi-Fi setup. The next test is using Category 6 cables with a switch, and the speeds are a lot faster. Being hardwired in is the recommended way to stream, especially if you are using a lot of data. So to get started, you need to have some similar items that I'm about to show. The first item is a switch. This particular model is by TP-Link. It has five ports on the front. There's a power LED and an LED for each port. The speed of this switch is 10 100 1000 megabits per second. If the LED is flashing yellow, it's running at 10 100. If it's green, then it's running at 1000. Flashing means that it's transmitting and receiving data. It has an all metal body design, can be mounted on a wall, and has rubber feet that can be attached for slippage. There is also a power supply. I'll have a link in the description if you want to know more information. The last items are CAT6 cables, or you can call them patch cables. You can also use CAT5e, but I went with these because of the support for 10 gigabit ethernet, higher bandwidth, crosstalk suppression, and better heat dissipation. You can identify most cables by the writing on the sleeve. Next, you want to have two PCs, which I'm pretty sure you have. Take three cables and plug them into the switch. I use port 1 for my gaming computer, port 3 for my streaming computer, and port 5 for connecting to my router. It's pretty simple and no configuration is needed. Don't forget to disable your Wi-Fi on your computers. Next, make sure both computers are on and the internet is working correctly. Log into your computer, the one that will be playing the games. Head to https forward slash forward slash ndi.tv forward slash tools and download NDI Scan Converter. You will find it at the bottom of the screen and it will come in a suite with other tools. Go ahead and register to download the software. When installing, you will get the option to do a complete install or just select what you need. A complete install will be fine for most users even though you may only use one other tool. When the installation is finished, find the program called Scan Converter and run it. You will find it in your system tray on the bottom right. There's just a few things we need to configure. Right click the program and go to Capture Settings. Make sure Region of Interest, Configure Region of Interest, or Mouse Pointer is not selected. You can change these later if you would like. Head to Audio Source and select System Audio. By the way, I have a game minimized in the background so it will pop up when connected on the Stream PC. Now, head over to your Stream PC and start up Streamlabs OBS. Log into your account and create a new scene or use a current one. Next, go to the Sources section and click the plus sign to add one. NDI Source should be on the bottom left. Select and proceed.
You can name it if you like, but I left mine at default. In the source name, open the drop down tab and select the name of your gaming computer. It should be listed. Nothing else needs to be touched. Click done. Now you should see your other computer on the screen. There will be no sound coming from the source, but you will be able to see the meters moving. My mic meter is moving because I have a microphone connected to my streaming PC. My NDI source is silent because I have not initialized the game environment. All I have to do is just click it. Once that is done, the meter is moving to signify audio. These are the settings that I am using to stream at 1080p 60fps. I chose 7000 for my bitrate and for the first time ever I get messages saying my bitrate is too high from YouTube. Something I've never gotten before. It's usually telling me that it's not enough and I need to reduce my frames. Now all that's left is to start the stream. Hit the go live button and select your scheduled event or create a new one. Since I played Overwatch last night, I'll just use that template. If you use the option use optimize encoder settings, it will override the set preset and any custom x264 flags you may have set. I use this option and I have had no problem at all. Hit confirm and go live and you're done. Soon you will see your stream on YouTube and all you have to do is click go live from within YouTube. It'll be on the top right corner. When setting up, I usually have my video set to private and when everything is going well, I change it to public. So that's pretty much it. I have a link to the stream video in the description if you would like to see how it came out. If you want more like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Meepoo, out.